It's time to start moving fish from the 180 down to the 265, but not every fish in this aquarium is going to make the cut. I have some tough decisions to make. I'm going to do this in conjunction with a big water change. I've got to pull the water down. I've got to get some of the hardscape out of here. Then I have to net out the fish that I don't want to leave in this aquarium. Not everything is going to come out. And as I said before, not everything that's in here is going to end up in the big tank. Ultimately, the goal is to get this tank completely emptied so I can re completely refurbish it. It's going to end up with a whole new filtration system, a whole new scape, and a whole new stocking of fish. It's not going to be South American cichlids again. Now it's just a waiting game until the water is low enough to do anything. It's amazing how much bigger these fish start to look when the water starts draining out of the tank. So the fish I've got to think twice about well, two for sure that aren't going to go in this aquarium are those plecos right down there on the bottom. These guys right here, these hypostomus. They don't get really big, but they're really, really messy. And there is one pleco in here that is definitely going to go into the tank, and that's Frank, the blue eye pleco. There he is right there. He's going to get a lot bigger, and he's the one that's causing a lot of damage to the wood, but. I can slow that down a little bit if I take those other two plecos out. And I think Frank will do a good enough job of keeping the wood down there in the 265 cleaned off. Geophagus Pellegrini, they'll make the cut. They're going down there. I like them. So will the Acaras, the Equidans. They'll make the cut. Chocolate Cichlid. He will definitely make the cut. He's one of my favorite fish in this tank. What's probably not going to make it are those Mezzanota. They're not from Colombia, and I've had them for a long time, but they're also getting kind of old in the tooth, and eventually I want to replace them with Mezzanota that do come from Colombia. The big decisions are the pike cichlids. That big guy back there, you know, I really like him, but I want to put some smaller fish in the tank, and while he's in the tank, that's just not going to happen. So I have a feeling that my big pike cichlids aren't going to make the cut, but I may change my mind. They're kind of hiding right now, but those striped leperinus, they are not going to make the cut. They're just getting too big. I never really intended to have them in this aquarium at all. So they're going to go find a new home. But what I haven't decided on are those silver dollars. Now that is not the Brazilian black bar silver dollar that stays about that big. These are the Colombian black bars that just get massive. They get much, much bigger than this even. But they have plenty of room to grow. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put them in the 265 and let them grow until I really can't keep them in there any longer. And then I'll find new homes for them as well. The other fish that are in here, they're going to make it. All the catfish will make it. You don't see very many of them, except for those two plecos. Sorry, I guess they are catfish. But this uh, Pimodello ornatus, he'll make it. And then what you don't see in there are the Raphael cats. And there should be two striped Raphael cats and one spotted Raphael cat that are hiding up underneath the woods somewhere. They will make it into the tank downstairs. Well, the tank is almost drained as far as I'm going to get it. I've got to get the wood out, start catching fish. I'm only going to move the fish that I'm going to keep down in the aquarium downstairs. Everything else is going to stay in here. I don't have another aquarium to keep them in. And then I'm going to have to make arrangements for their rehoming, and then I will be able to get rid of them and drain this tank again and get it emptied out. I think that's gonna take a few weeks. 
There's the female Geophagus. Here's Frank. You give him the water pretty quick though. I don't like holding him out of the water very long. There's the chocolate cichlid. Whoop. There he is. There's the male geophagus. So I think I got enough fish in this bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and take these downstairs and get them acclimated into the big tank. And just let the fish that are up in the aquarium here stay here until I come get the next load. So I use the same water out of the tap in both aquariums. So I'm not really worried about water chemistry other than the water in the tank upstairs is older than the water that's in this tank. There's probably a lot more dissolved organics and stuff in it. So just to be on the safe side, I am going to acclimate these fish. Temperature is about the same. So I will probably just let this sit for about five minutes or so, do that a couple times. I'm gonna go ahead and put these fish in this aquarium and then go get the next set. All right, here we go. First in is gonna be Frank. Welcome to your new home, Frank. Go clean up that wood. Next will be the chocolate cichlid. I wonder if we'll ever see him again. They like dark places. He may go up against that back wall and be lucky to ever see him. Here comes the male geophagus. It'd be interesting to see what happens when he gets in here with these Geophagus Neva. He's so much bigger than they are. Then here comes three at once. Here comes the female Geophagus and two of the Equidens. There we go. Now I have to go reload the bucket and get the rest of the fish down here. So I've got the rest of the fish out, or I hope I have the rest of the fish out. I got a slight problem with that, I'll tell you in a sec. Got them acclimated, ready to go. I'm gonna get them in the tank so I get them out of the bucket. That Universal Rocks background that I have inside that aquarium upstairs doesn't actually fit. And there's actually quite a big gap at the bottom and there's space up underneath it. I apparently did not seal it up as well as I'd hoped to seal it up. And over the years, it's kind of spread away. So I've only found one of the Raphael cats even though I know I've seen them in there recently. <clears throat> so my suspicion is they're up there underneath that, up there behind that background. Um, so the only way to get them out is gonna be when I drain the tank to get it completely emptied, uh, it's going to, to pull that background out a little bit and hopefully they'll drop right out or prop it out and let them fall out on their own. That's not gonna happen today. Let's get these fish into the tank. Uh, I am going to put the big silver dollars in. Here's one of those and an Achedens. My last Achedens, another big one. Here comes the Pimadella catfish, the Renatus. I'm 
Nice fish. It's so active. And then here comes one of the severums. I just realized in telling you this that there's still a severum upstairs in that aquarium. I gotta see if I can catch him out of there tonight. If not, then he's gonna have to come out later. He could be one of those fish that's up underneath that background as well. Not good. I am gonna use that background in the aquarium, but this time I'm gonna have to get it all dried out and all sealed up. I'm gonna use spray foam and completely block off the bottom of it so that there's no way any fish can get up in there. The only problem with that background is it doesn't actually fit the tank. It was an extra background we had that wasn't tall enough and I decided to use it anyway. So I wasn't able to get all the fish out from behind that background, but I did get a very important one out from behind the background. And I'm only gonna show it to you really quick. This is a spotted Raphael cat. And I know for a fact that this catfish is at least 23 years old. And it's got a really cool backstory. Before I tell you the story of the spotted Raphael catfish, let me show you the two upgrades I've made to the 265 system. The first thing I did was I went ahead and added a little two bulb T5 fixture on the front part of the tank. And I like the even light that it gives at the very front, it brightens it up. But as you'll see in a minute, you can still see the shimmer effect and you still have all of the infinity effect in the tank. And I've got that on timers. That's the other thing I've changed, is I'm now using these smart plugs. The smart plugs are controlling the lights. There's one on that T5 and there's one on the spotlights on the top. I've also got the smart plugs underneath the pumps. I'm not using them for the heaters because those pretty much aren't going to be turned on and off. But now instead of having to unplug the pumps or turn them off here, I can just go to my phone when I do a water change and turn off those smart plugs. So that's really the only upgrades to this aquarium other than getting the fish into it. So now let's uh, take a break and see how it looks. I bought that spotted Raphael catfish in either the summer of 1997 or 1998. I, I really don't remember when. I was living in Phoenix, Arizona at the time and I was a high school teacher. And I had a 75 gallon aquarium in my classroom. And it stayed in that aquarium until the May of 2000. Now something else about the May of 2000. In January of 2000, I was in a really bad car accident and I missed 60 days of school that spring. So I was not there. I was not taking care of those aquariums. And one of my students volunteered to care for all the fish tanks. And it wasn't just one, there were four or five fish tanks. There's an awful lot of snakes too. And he took care of everything. And at the end of the school year, I basically said to him, what do you want? Because I was moving school districts. I wasn't gonna stay at that school. Everything had to get torn down but he earned something. I said, what do you want? He goes, uh, you know, Mr. Judy, you could, they're your fish. I'm just happy I got to take care of them. I'm happy they're okay. I said, oh, come on, please. You got you to have something. I know you have aquariums at home. He said, well, I really like that spotted Raphael catfish. I said, done, it's yours. Take the spotted Raphael catfish and take something else. And he took a couple of pairs of cichlids, you know, some, some other stuff, took some plants. So that was in the year 2000, and then in 2007, we had moved to Wisconsin by this point. I was no longer teaching, but I had joined Facebook in 2007, and he was one of the people, my former students, that I friended on Facebook. And one of the first things he said to me was, you know what, Mr. Judy, I still have that spotted Raphael catfish, which I thought was really cool. It was at 10 years old at this point, and he'd had it all that time. And then about six months later, he sent me a message that said that his job was relocating him to Hong Kong and he was gonna have to be there for five years. And would I like to have the spotted Raphael catfish back? And I said, well, of course. So in 2008, I got the spotted Raphael catfish back. So now that would have been right about this time of year. So that was 12 years ago. So do the math. 
So 1997, 2007, 2017, 18, 19, 20, so 23 years. And figure that that Spotted Raphael catfish was probably a year old before I, before I got it, maybe a year old. It's the oldest fish I've had. It's the oldest fish I've ever had. And it is going to have a home for as long as it lives. And for the time being, it's going to live in this beautiful 265 gallon custom aquariums, complete setup, filtration system, tank, stand, the whole works that I've designed as an infinity aquarium. And as I sit here sipping on bourbon, telling you this story, watching these fish move in and out of the light, I really like it. It's a little cloudy today because I just did that big water change. Frank is in here now, so he'll start cleaning off that wood. And as this tank matures, it's gonna be awesome. So thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room. And I'll give you another update on this aquarium in about a week. And hopefully in about a week, we'll get started on tearing down and rebuilding the 180 gallon aquarium as well. See you next time.